Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm doing something a little different. I'm talking about the entirety of the Blackstone Chronicles by John Saul. We have six books in the series. I've reviewed each book individually, and now I want to talk about the story as a whole. And I'm going to admit, I said this in the first video, I'm doing things this way to give myself a buffer. I'm getting seven videos out of this, and that way I'm going to have the time to read some bigger things, some things that might be a little, you know, a little thicker in the prose, and then uh, and and that way I can I can dig into that stuff and not uh, run out of videos. So uh, that's this is what you get, and I wanted to read these and initially couldn't decide if I should do them one at a time or as a whole, so I'm doing both, essentially. Uh, so what we have here, for those of you who may have skipped the first six parts of this, is the Blackstone Chronicles, which in 1997 was released as a serial novel, one book a month for six months, and we started with An Eye for an Eye, The Doll, that was followed by Twist of Fate, The Locket, Ashes to Ashes, The Dragon Flame, uh, In the Shadow of Evil, The Handkerchief, Day of Reckoning, The Stereoscope, and finally, Asylum. Those are your six parts, and for, again, if you didn't watch the other videos, you just jumped in here at the end. Uh, it's the town of Blackstone, and uh, at the top of the highest hill in the town is the Blackstone Asylum. It's going to be torn down and turned into a uh, community center, a mall type of thing. And uh, they have a ceremonious, uh, ceremonial, excuse me, wrecking ball, smash one of the walls. And then a dark figure sneaks in and from a secret hiding place, removes an object in each book removes a single object leaves it for someone and that object creates chaos um and so each book focuses on one of those objects and the family or the person that it's given to and the terrible things that it does and meanwhile we have the overarching story of who is this mysterious figure uh, why are they doing this? Um, <clears throat> what is the mystery that Oliver Metcalf, our, really the main character of everything, he's the editor of the Blackstone Chronicles, uh, the newspaper, and he's been having headaches and visions and blackouts, and uh, his sister died under mysterious circumstances. His father used to be head of the asylum. Uh, what's going on with him? Uh, what connection do the modern-day families of Blackstone have to the atrocities that occurred in the asylum decades ago? That's the overarching story. So if you watched uh, the previous series, you'll know that I feel the story started strong. The first two books, first two parts, I gave five stars. Then uh, three, four, and five, I gave four stars. Last book I gave three. I feel it was a weak ending. Overall, as a whole, I'm going to give it four stars. I really liked this story. Um, and you can get it. Uh, I mean, if you go to Half Price Books or your uh, used bookstore, you might get lucky and find an entire set like I did. Uh, but you can get it. You can order it on Amazon, perhaps Barnes & Noble. We'll see if I have that in the links below. Uh, you can get it in a single volume and read the whole thing. Uh, one of the things I liked about this is it reminded me of Friday the 13th, The Series, which is a TV show, for those of you who aren't aware, TV show that had nothing to do with the movies, the Friday the 13th movies. It was about an antique shop that was inherited by two cousins, a man and a woman, and it, their uncle had been gathering these cursed antiques, but they got loose into the world I don't remember how. Uh, so each week, the cousins are hunting down a different cursed object. 
Uh, I do recall one time it was the scalpel of Jack the Ripper that ended up in the hands of a surgeon. There were some cursed boxing gloves. I remember the guy that had those, his shadow, you know, shadow boxing. His shadow would come to life and kill people. There was a cursed Amish quilt. Uh, I don't remember all of the objects. It went on for a couple of seasons, I believe. Uh, but it, and it was it was just a fun kind of show. Uh, again, I think a lot of people were disappointed because it had nothing to do with the movies. Maybe there was a hockey mask in the antique shop. I don't recall. But um, but cursed object, a different cursed object every week. It's essentially what we have here: a different cursed object. And so in the first one, we got a creepy doll. I always enjoy that. And then uh, and I like how it tied in to the people it was given to. The same with the locket. Uh, and one of the things that uh, John Saul did with each book, except the last one, I believe, uh, was the book would start with the shadow... Well, the first book starts with the hole being knocked in the wall in the asylum. Then we have the shadowy figure in the asylum choosing the object... And then we get a scene from the past showing essentially how the object ended up in the asylum. Um, and then we back to the modern day and the story, we get bits of the overarching story. In the first book, of course, we're introduced to all of our main characters. And then the object found, gifted to somebody and craziness happens. And uh, <clears throat> so the first, in the doll, the locket, the uh, dragon head lighter, and the handkerchief all very much tie into what happens in the modern day to the people that have received these gifts. Um, but the stereoscope... Uh, there's a reason it's given to the people it's given to, but it doesn't tie in quite as much. Like, what happens doesn't tie in to its history quite as much as in the other books. And then uh, in the last book, Asylum, it's a razor. And I talked about this in my review for that specific book. It doesn't really cause chaos so much as unlock memories and give us the conclusion I said in that other video, the last book felt like the ending of an Agatha Christie book where Poirot has gathered everybody into the drawing room and lays out everything that he has learned. Um, we don't have everybody gathered in one place, but we do have a couple of people uh, essentially explaining everything. Uh, this is going to be a bit spoilery. So skip the next minute or so. I don't know. Uh, the one, one of the things that's unanswered, possibly the only thing that's unanswered, is why these objects do what they do. Um, I suppose you can just fill in on your own that there was so much evil going on in the asylum that it infused these different objects, and so they caused the, the chaos that they caused. Um, and we don't, like, the doll never, like, walks around or anything, but it does have an influence. The locket absolutely has an influence. They all have some sort of influence. There's a supernatural something going on. And we're never told exactly why. So I just, I have to conclude it's just the evil being perpetrated in the asylum by the doctors and everything just infused these objects and made them give off evil. Uh, but it's never, it, it's never explained to us. Um, who this dark figure is, is explained. And one of the reasons... I gave book six, again, this is, was in the previous video, but one of the reasons, maybe-ish, that I gave that only three stars, is I, I thought it was pretty obvious who the dark figure was. Um, but 
I don't know, the, the last part of the book just fell flat. So we started really strong with the first two. Still good, really good, with three, four, and five. And then just kind of a flat ending. Um, it, yeah, I mean, it ties everything up. Again, except for that, why are the things actually doing what they're doing? Um, but, yeah, it, it ties everything up, but it was, I don't know, it was, it was unsatisfying, in my opinion. Um, uh, if you've read this series, or if you choose to go out and find this series and read it, I'm really curious to hear what people have to think about the ending. The series as a whole, of course, but uh, really want to know what people think of the ending to this series. Um, see if they agree with me, disagree, tell me why I'm wrong about the ending. Um, but that's, uh, I don't know if there's anything else I have to say about this. If you like cursed object stories, absolutely pick this up. Um, it's a lot of fun, and if you can... If it's available anywhere, check out Friday the 13th, the series. I'm sure it's uh, definitely a product of its time, <coughs> which was the 90s, I think. Um, I'd, I'd like to watch it again. I would even, if it was like available in a box set, I would pick it up, pick up the DVDs. But uh, yeah, I like a good cursed object story, especially a creepy doll. Uh, I liked the writing. John Saul was a sol John Saul is a solid writer. Um, I like the characters, the, the, the good characters and the really horrible characters um, were all interesting. I liked seeing some people get their comeuppance. I uh, hated to see some people, uh, the, the fate of some of the people in the first... The first book definitely had a couple of shocking moments that I absolutely loved. That's why I gave it... Uh, five out of five. The second book, uh, not quite with the shocking moments, but still some really cool stuff going on. That's why that got a five out of five. Um, the uh, three, four, and five, still some cool stuff. Uh, John Saul does occasionally um, trip into uh, like movie jump scares. There's I'm not going to tell you which book, but uh, there's literally something really scary and creepy is happening. Uh, it turns out to be a raccoon, um, which is fine, I suppose. There's a lot of dreams going on, which isn't in and of itself a bad thing, but can get, you know, become worn out if it's overused in a single story. Um, oh. I mentioned in the last video that book six has an afterword by the author. And so some of the complaints that I may have made, I didn't because John Saul himself says, <coughs> excuse me, he knows that there are certain continuity issues because part one was published before he had finished writing part four or five or six. I don't know how, how far ahead how far behind, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, how far ahead the books were coming out, how far behind he was in writing. I would have thought that you'd have written the whole thing before it was published. I mean, if it's it's six parts of a whole, each one coming out a month apart, I don't see why you wouldn't have just said, here's the entire manuscript. Now just release it a month at a time. But apparently that's not what happened. And so... There are things written in the earlier books that he contradicted mistakenly or found that they weren't going to work with the way the story was going and it was too late to change them. So I decided not to bring those things up. There were a couple of things that I was going to mention that I was like, you know, in the first book it said this, but then in book four it said this, but he cops to it. So I'm not going to complain about that. I guess that's the nature of putting out a serial novel like this. I wonder if Stephen King had the same thing happen with The Green Mile. 
or if he had the whole thing done before they broke it up or before they published it in its six parts. We'll see when I read that. And I may or may not do the same thing with The Green Mile, because I have the six parts, not the collected. Um, we'll see. Let me know what you think of this whole thing as a series that may or may not uh, affect my decision on how I review The Green Mile when I finally read that. But anyway, I think that's everything I had to say about The Blackstone Chronicles Parts 1 through 6. Um, I have these this way, but they really need to go in this order. Whoops. They really need to go this way, because that's the way they're going to sit on the shelf. But I had them with part one on top, because that's the book I was going to show you first. <laughs> We're getting a little too deep into, into here right now. But there you go. See now, part six is on top. Um, the Blackstone Chronicles by John Saul, parts one through six. Four out of five stars. I enjoyed it overall. Disappointed by the ending. Strong beginning. Uh, give it a try if you haven't read it already. And if you have read it, jump in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. No question for this video. I don't believe I've had a question for any of the videos in this little mini-series within the Low Budget Review Show. Um, but again, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below comments are open for spoilers just post a spoiler warning we try to be polite here at the low budget review show please like share and subscribe all the usual youtube stuff and if you'd care to follow me on other social media my twitter is at ronan5757 my instagram where i post pictures of books comic books board games and fuzzy animals is eric smith 5757 that's eric with a k e-r-i-k-s-m-i-t-h 5757 and if you're on blue sky i am at el smith that's all I have for you. This has been the Low Budget Review Show, a special edition. I've been Eric Smith, and until next time, read more books.